Lads, what a fun draft. How are we, Alex Daniel, guys? How's life? No, man, it's good. I mean, I didn't even watch the draft because I was working, but you guys were there. I Word. don't even I, I don't even don't ask me what I thought about the draft. I want to know what you guys thought of the draft. Well, so yeah, Daniel and I were there. Uh, we were there for the first round. I left because we were leaving the same day, my mom and I, back to Ontario. We left after the third round on the second day. Daniel, you stayed for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I, I think of him, uh, like I wanted a little later just go through the entire few days because it was really yeah. wild. But the draft itself, uh, Batman trying to come out with members of the family, both Guy Lafleur and Mike Bossy, still getting booed. Uh, I think getting booed every time he introduced the next team was tremendous. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think it was the most energetic draft in recent years. It doesn't help that I went to it, so maybe a little biased, but I loved the energy of it. Uh, the Bell Center reminded everyone why Montreal is such a special hockey market. It was insane. It was insane. Daniel, that was the first time you've been to the Bell Center. Yes, I was. Oh, my goodness. Um, when you said it was loud, I, I didn't expect it to be that loud. For the picks, for the cheering, everything. I think, yeah, I'd, I'd like to come back to watch a game there. But like being there for the draft, it was something special. When you talk about the energy, just it's and it's really hard to kind of take in everything that was going on. Like you, you're literally seeing these guys getting drafted. And then at every table, all these people that you know just by watching them on TV. It's insane. Like... Or even seeing, you mentioned seeing Martin Brodeur or me seeing Jason Spezza or just seeing these people all around. It's just, it was a special time for me, but it's also just, it's still kind of like coming back to Toronto and having this feeling that that actually happened and how special it was to have it in Montreal. You know what? Yeah. It was, so it's really weird. If you've never been to a draft, you know, what the Bell Center is one of those arena. It's like Scotia Bank. Like, it's in the heart of the downtown core. Uh, it, it's not like, you know, other arenas that are just in the middle of its own area. Like I'm not, I'm not just trying to throw shade at the sense, but, but like, you know, there are some arenas that are like, they're very distinctive. They're in their own way. But so what's really funny is before the draft, if you just stood around the bell center, you would see guys just walking around prospects. Uh, like I saw at one point I was, I was going to meet Daniel cause he was a little lost. Um, and on the way back, as I'm getting Daniel, I'm like, okay, come with me. I whispered to him, Ken Holland's behind us. And Martin Brodeur is just walking around. And it was really cool. You would just look one way and there's like, oh, there's this massive, important figure in the world of hockey. And there's a certain section, um, like to the side of the Bell Center, where all like the statues and that are, that are, I think it's called like Centennial Park or something. Um, there was like a section off where teams get in prospects, like coming off of buses and that. So we saw the Kings bus arrive. Bergeron wasn't on it. So everyone we were hoping. Left. Yeah. Lamorello and the Islanders, everyone chanting Lou. The Canucks come off. Crowd losing it for Bruce Boudreau because they love him. Yeah. Uh, it was really, really cool. And this, I've been to a lot of, obviously, tons of hockey stuff there. But it was so, so cool. And the, the hype around having the first pick, too, was already fun enough. But. You know, it opens up with, you know, Batman does his whole thing. Again, like Bossy and LaFleur's family, Mike Bossy chant, geek chants, amazing stuff. But what really got me was to start uh, that they bring out Marty St. Louis and he says, you know, well, I think he, 47 years, he waits to attend his first draft. And it was worth it, it was such a great speech for Marty and talking about the guys who aren't at home, hard work and that and Marty St. Louis not drafted, perfect example. Telling the guys that who were there at the draft, this is the easy part. This is just the first step. Uh, it was it was incredible. It was in even if I wasn't I didn't love the first overall pick, and we can get to that a little later. Um, Slavkovsky walking around the arena. You know what, Alex, Daniel, and I actually right in front of our section. We were in the middle bowl, two hundreds. Right in front of us is where they had to set up the uh, Sportsnet uh, little panel. Yeah. So and next to them were TVA. So Slavkovsky actually went right in front of us to do his media. And that's when the Olay chants are starting, the Go Habs Go chants. Uh, it was something like an experience I've had nowhere else before in a hockey event. Uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, and sorry, I know I'm, I'm rambling here, but there's something else I wanted to talk about. And this was 
the day before the draft. Because, uh, again, I'm a season ticket holder. So they had this, like, they called it a cocktail reception. But basically what it was is, uh, like, it was like, almost like this weird kind of tour around parts of the Bell Center. So, you know, you go in there, you get a picture of Jeff Molson, which was like, this is weird. Uh, and then, like, you go through the Habs locker room, you can get pictures there. I sat on, at Carey Price's stall, and I was like, this feels wrong. Uh, and then you go to, like, an entrance to take you to the draft stage, right? And as I'm going there, like, with my mom, there's this dude. I want. I couldn't get another ticket for Daniel. I still feel bad about it. It's we were okay. limited to buy two, pick, two tickets. I feel bad. Um, but uh, there's this guy who's working, like, managing the line. I'm like, hey, buddy, I like your bow tie, right? And he said, yeah, thanks, kid. And he tells us, so you're going to get the top of this. You're going to go to the stage and you're taking pictures with the kids. And I'm like, wait a minute, Suzuki and Caulfield. And he's like, no, 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 the prospects. So they set it up where you could take a picture of like, it was like Gautier, um, Slavkovsky, Cooley, obviously Wright and someone else. I can't, it wasn't Nemich. Uh, Savoy, Savoy, sorry, Matt Savoy. Uh, and like, Everyone was like shaking their hand, you know, saying, you know, good luck, good luck. But I like where the picture was taken. I stood next to Shane, right? And I whispered to him, good luck tomorrow. Uh-huh. <laughs> it just, oh, it was, it was a mess. <laughs> and then like afterwards, right, is like at the end of the tour, they take these like one of the Bell Center, like the restaurants attached to the Bell Center. And it's like, you know, Chantel McAbey is there. Mr. Molson's there. Uh, Hughes and LeCavale and Jeff Gordon were bought out, but then they were there for like five minutes and they ran away probably just to go continue doing calls. And Marty St. Louis there, and I got a picture with him. Really nice guy for him on my Instagram. Uh, uh, you know, it was just like, as a Habs fan, it was it just so fun. It just yeah. felt so homey and everything was special about it. Good. I'm glad oh, you guys yeah. had fun. That sounds... Yeah. Like a lot yeah, of fun. and Schwartz is great, by the way. Great. Yes. great. I have Schwartz's, a- <laughs> Schwartz's deli? Yeah. Yeah, oh, we, we went tier. there. It was nice. Um, I have one funny story because Adam actually kind of really talked about a lot more about like what we enjoy, like the energy, just the atmosphere, being there, seeing all those red jerseys is pretty cool. Um, that's not used to seeing that much red, to be honest. <sighs> um, yeah. One funny story we have is there was a guy sitting beside us who kept talking to me um you know he's a uh, huge huge Habs fan and everything and like he was just asking a bunch of questions with me and then he's like who's your favorite did you break, the, did you break the news to him though that you're a uh, fan? not not yet oh, he's yeah. like uh he's like so who's your favorite Habs player and then I looked at Adam and I said Gianni Fairbrother <laughs> and, Adam's like, and I just saw Adam's reaction and then this guy's like oh wow like you must really follow Laval Rocket yeah I just, like, because, like, I said out loud, I'm like, like, there were Habs fans who don't know who Gianni Fairbrother is, but Daniel just does. Because I brought one of my extra jerseys for Daniel. He wore my Jonathan yeah. Buren jersey, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, Daniel, I think he's wearing it. He got a draft hat. I hey, got a yes. shirt. It's behind me, and Daniel's wearing the hat. Uh, but, yeah, he was, like, the guy, like, ran, like, a memorabilia thing, and he was, like, he was trying to sell us on. He gave us our, his business card and everything. Oh. He's, like... Here's this coffee old little thing I did. Thousand dollars is like okay. I'm just gonna go back. Yeah, <laughs> not uh, this economy. Yeah, just just calm down here, buddy. Uh, we actually we had, so they had all the awards there, right? Except the cup because the bells, the Canadians were like, we don't want it in the building. They had it for Lafleur's funeral, but for the draft, they're like, no. Uh, so we got to meet. The Sorry, the Stanley for- Cup. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, the Stanley Cup. So then Daniel and I, because the two Hall of Fame guys were, there, including the keeper of the cup, we actually talked to them. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that was uh, that was neat. Did they have anything interesting to say? So uh, apparently, the blonde guy he's yep. from the UK. I didn't know. So it was really funny because then we were talking to one of the guys, and then my mom was talking to the other one, and he had said to her like basically he would like go home the next day, sleep, probably eat, and then he's on the road. Like the guys travel is as like spectacular as you think he, no, he yeah. actually didn't remember Shane Knight. The, the other guy didn't remember Shane Wright's full name. I think he <laughs> called him Sean, Wright. But he was asking me, he's like, who do you think they're going to take? I'm like, they better take Shane. They did not. So he, another thing I wanted to mention this, you know, how the coyotes were wearing the same outfit. So <laughs> yeah. here's the thing. They didn't understand if you had just watched through like everyone's around the lower bowl. Wait, sorry. What, what do you mean the Coyotes were wearing the same outfit? So the so Coyotes management yeah. 
they were all wearing the exact same. They were matching suits. And they're like Habs colors for some reason. It was like, yeah, it was like the blue, like the, 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 the dark blue with coyotes pins or right? like red ties. The honor of the Winnipeg Jets. And here's the thing. They only fully matched the first day. The second day, only some of them wore it. Anyway, so they're just the front entrance to the Bell Center is on the 100th level, right? Uh, and here's what's, what's really annoying is the Coyotes brass didn't understand. If you just walk through any section, you can probably get down to the draft floor. So they were completely walking around and they cut across the front entrance where all the fans were coming in. And one of them had a freaking bag and my mom nearly tripped over him. Didn't even apologize. And I made the joke. Well, sorry, mom. They just don't know how to walk through an NHL arena because they're yeah. used to college, college arenas. arenas. They were incredibly rude. I will say the Coyotes. It was like, you, have you never been to, do you know, not, not know how to navigate an arena, idiots? Or why didn't you go through the other entrance to the other side? Anyway, it was. I'd like to point out from that group, because I was looking through it. Shane Doan was not with them. No, he was not. He was not. I, it was weird. I don't know why it wasn't. But uh, anyway, like I just took like six pages of job notes of stuff from the draft and everything that took place because there has been a lot of news. I doubt we're going to get to everything today, but we will try. Um, but the draft, I'm sure we're going to remember more stuff than to bring it up. Like Gary Bettman getting booed and looking physically agitated about it, which was really funny. Don't think the Habs are going to get another draft for a couple of years because of that. I think the fans are very upset with them. The big story, though, gentlemen, Uri Slavkovsky was the first overall pick in the NHL draft. Montreal Canadiens in Montreal take him. I do have to ask. Yeah. I didn't get to watch it, so I didn't actually hear it. Were yeah. there actually boos? Or is that just the rumor going around? So I didn't hear many boos. There was shock. And then I think the crowd sort of instantly realized this is our guy and then started being really happy for him. Like if you Fair. looked at Twitter the last few days, because of what a certain Shane Wright did to the Habs table, uh, everyone has all of a sudden fallen in love with Uri Slavkovsky. You know, I can't let that was, happen though, right? It was low. Well, it's, it's, I can't, uh, I can't talking. let that, I can't let that happen just oh, by based on principle. People I'm not were apologizing there, to Grant McCag, by the way. Stop there, it. There, there's, I don't even care. Like to me, um, I thought, I mean, to me, it was a lot, I think it was a lot closer than maybe for you, Adam, but, um, I cannot let these people be happy. I saw and I saw some people on on Twitter the next day. You know, pro Shane Wright guys, and not you, not you, but other people who were very quick to jump on the Uri Slavkovsky bandwagon. Hmm. And I'm not going to let them have that. Okay, I'm going to let you just <laughs> simmer in the in the piss bed that you made. Okay, not you, Adam. Yeah, because I like you. But there's other people out there. Like, I, I agree with what Adam said that like it wasn't really so much booze than shock and fair. what is going on because when the pick was being announced and then when you heard like like this Slovak league yeah from the Slovak league that yeah. was when I'm like oh my gosh because I was shocked in my I want to get a reaction video um thankfully Adam's mom has a reaction video of Adam reacting to the pick. I hope to see <laughs> that soon, by the way, Adam. Um, I That was crazy for me, for that to happen, and then just how everything else followed. Really really crazy time for me. Um, you know, my first draft, and for something to have that much drama so early on was crazy. I do have to admit something, though. I have to confess. Okay. I have to confess. So, Daniel, I don't know if you saw it. I know Adam absolutely saw it because he did comment on it in the group chat. But you know uh, how Mike how Mike posted the odds. Oh yeah, yeah. The betting odds for Slavk- Slavkovsky at one and Shane Wright at two, as if he placed a bet. Mm-hmm. That was not Mike. So it's funny, that was me. Before the draft, <laughs> Will me. Will had texted me and he's like, which, Shane Wright, which one? Which one? Baldwin. Baldwin. Okay. Will Baldwin texted me. He's like, you know, Wright's the favorite. I'm like, I don't care. Uh, but I noticed, I saw stuff on Twitter that the days leading up were drastically his odds were going smaller and smaller. Shane, Shane Wright? Shane Wright, yeah. It was it was uh it was dropping <laughs> the the, odd, the odds that I bet on were plus one seventy four and that was the morning of by the way I sent, my, uh, I sent my reaction to the group chat. Go do forty eight seconds in if you guys just wanna 
if you guys want to want to have a look at it and see how I feel while okay. I just quickly uh if I while I just quickly just 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 talk <laughs> about some stuff here. Listen, here's the thing is and yeah, we're gonna talk about chain right in a second here. So my reaction was I sent it to Will and he said you look terrified. All right, like I said. I want Shane. Oh, sorry, I, I do want Shane right. Um, <laughs> I want Yuri Slavkovsky to work out because he's a hab. Listen, I, the, the, the shocking part is that he went fourth. That he oh, went you, you're forward. surprised? I see. I, I, Corey Pronman nailed it of the athletic, yeah. right? Yeah, he placed him fourth. Nailed it. But I was, I listen. We had an idea it was going to be Shane or Sapkowski. Towards the last few days, I sort of went into full denial mode about the whole thing. I was like, no, it's got to be Shane. We knew it was probably going to be Shane or Sapkowski, right? For Montreal first overall. Right. I just didn't think that both the 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 Devils and the Coyotes were going to pass on him. Nemitz sort of rising, I don't think, was a surprise because he was always I – think, I, think, I think if anyone was going to rise in surprise – and surprise, I think it was good to be Nemitz. Yeah. But the fact that the Coyotes then said, okay, cool, we come on down. It was uh, it was insane. Like the vibe in the Bell Center, Alex, as it was going on and he was falling, was I I, I was bouncing around. It was it was insane to think. It was insane. Yeah, I mean, no, I agree. Oh, I can imagine the crowd, um, the crowd was like that. It's just to me. I thought Cooley was the guy at three, like no matter what, like knowing Air, I think Arizona had their guy. I think met that, that management group had their guy and Logan Cooley. Not that I know yeah. anything just based off of what people were, were writing and, and what I was reading is that Logan Cooley uh, was their guy. To me, it was first and it, it was either first or fourth and Shane Wright could have gone second if the devils traded their pick, because I didn't think the devils were going to take Shane Wright at second. Yeah, I agreed. Um, to be honest, when I saw Shane Wright falling, because from all everything we've read in the lead up to the draft, I actually thought Shane Wright was going to drop to Philly at fifth. Oh, really? Because we, we saw all the reports of the crack and wanted to maybe add a defenseman this time. I'm like, Hey, would your check actually go up? Where, where he was going to get picked. And then would Shane Wright actually go to Philadelphia? Because for them, they wanted a center regardless. And it was kind of crazy to me because I, I don't know. It was just, we, we always talked about Shane Wright, but I think it was just without the Montreal factor there, I think it would have been just, you know, maybe like 2017. What where like where we had so much coverage of Shane Wright speaking to, Montreal or the lead up to everything when he was playing in Kingston. Remember all those people showing up with Montreal jerseys with his name on it. Yep. I think if you didn't have that added context, plus the fact that it was in the city and just how things were going. And, you know, there was more emphasis on having the dinners with him, but they did have dinners with the other prospects. But I think it's just when people really did focus on that, that's when I think there was just that added narrative to everything. So here's what's interesting about, about right. Because I think he did everything to say he wanted to be a hab. And I believe that he believed he was going to get taken because there were events like he was at the doing like a thing with the world gaming championships and he was playing as the Habs and saying like, ah, Carrie's keeping me in this, this game I'm playing. Okay. That, that tells you there was a game. I maybe like in a prospects game earlier this year where they each had their own goal horns. He made his goal song Montreal's. So, you know, he thought he was going first. And like and I, I and also if you want to see any more disdain the mind the, the guy might have had, uh, him staring down the Habs table when he got selected by the Coyotes was evidence enough. This by is Seattle, by Seattle. By Seattle, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was something interesting that, that kind of came out. There were sort of quotes from the Canadians comparing their interviews at the combine with Slavkovsky and Shane Wright. Right, I mean, I think it's the pun, the pun, the, pun the, <laughs> the puns have just begun. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, and Slavkovsky, the way that the Habs brass put it, they drilled him and he took criticism. And something that maybe rubbed the Canadians the wrong way was when Wright was pressed about the and, and criticized about his play, he didn't handle it very well. 
you know, I, I, I don't, I, listen, I, you know, I, I, I get that's important because a lot of people have made the point of, and the Canadians mentioned this themselves, getting a player who can handle the, the pressure and the criticism of the Montreal, right? Mm-hmm. I hope it wasn't just a character thing, but it was definitely part of it, right? Like, listen, I, I get I, This draft is going to be very important for the Canadians in a couple of years. Because we got to remember, it's not just the Sapkowski pick. It was right before Seattle went. We have a trade to announce. Oh, that was insane, yeah. Please be quiet because I don't know why you're booing because it's your team. And the Canadians trading for herself. I'm not, I still can't process that they traded Alexander Romano, by the way, to the Islanders for the 13th pick. And I think there's another selection in there. And then the second pick being that 13th overall selection is then flipped to the Blackhawks for Kirby Doc, who went third overall in 2019, as people may or may not know. So can we just say it's a three way, three team trade? Like I hate yeah. when they do, I hate when the NHL does that. Like, do like with the NBA. disdain, do it like, yeah, man. Like it's a three team <laughs> trade, man. Like, honestly, so <laughs> sorry. Here's what is what's really important is this was a draft that no matter who was taken first, three, four years down the line, this draft was going to get picked apart. Right now, what the, the Canadians did here was. We know Suzuki's the first line center of the future. We know Caulfield's the big, not the big winger. He's a tiny boy, but Safkowski is there too. And they would hope with this move that Kirby Doc will be the second line center of the future, right? And you can see the identity, how they want to get stronger down the middle, faster down the middle. Kirby Doc's 6'4". You know what I mean? Uh, by the way, it's really funny. He's 6'4", Safkowski 6'4", Anderson 6'3", Caulfield 5'7", Lane Hudson, who they drafted, we'll talk about that. Uh, also, like five eight. So uh, the Canadians don't care how tall or short you are. Uh, but it was funny. But what I mean is, you can see that this is a draft more than just first overall. That is the first sort of the way the Canadians evaluate their team and how they're going to do it setting forward. This is the first blueprint of the plan of how the team is good. This is the real structure of the core. You know, we can talk about other prospects, but these guys at the top of the draft, the prospects they're bringing up, they're the real core members. The other guys at their, at their best are probably going to be complementary players. This is why this draft is going to be so important. Does it help that they acquired a center with a lot of upside? Yes and no. It helps that you have that more than Bergman ever did to try and get a centerman. For a Deneau does not count. Uh, he does. I, no, but no, no, no. No, he doesn't. It was a throw in. Um, but. <laughs> You know, uh, if, if he wasn't French, I don't know if Bergeron would have loved to have taken him, to be honest. Um, but it's still like, I, I, it still feels like it should have been Shane. Um, so it, it helps and it doesn't almost. But it's it's very, like, I think the Habs overall had a really good draft. Like, Lane Hudson, <laughs> you should have seen my reaction, Alex. I was so happy they got him. Uh, Owen Beck. At 33, I was like, there, I thought the Leafs were going to get him, remember? Solid I'm center. happy with yeah. I thought they had, and even like guys like Corey Proman and, 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 and Scott Wheeler said they had a good draft. Yeah. They never have good drafts like this. You forgot somebody. Who did, oh, uh, he, uh, he, uh, who uh, I can't remember oh, his name. At who? 26th. I can't remember his name. Okay, so this is Frank I wanted to mention. No, no, they didn't get Frank Mizar. They got like Misar is his name. Oh, Misar. Philip Misar. So let me sorry. There you go. There you go. I was going to ask you guys who are the winners of the losers of the draft because I was going to say that my winner is the country of Slovakia. Yeah. Stokowski won, Nemitz two, and then Misar later. Apparently, all three childhood friends. Have you guys seen the reaction of Slavkovsky when he found out? Yes. That he yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yes. Great video. Great yes. video. I like that. Um, we can circle back to more of the discussion with the Habs and the Leafs because I didn't want to talk about their draft and the Morazzi deal, especially. Um, but overall, who do you guys see as your winners and your losers of the draft? Um, for me, I think the winners are, I'm going to say the Habs, the Ducks, the Wild. Okay, I'm going to leave, leave some teams for the rest of us. Oh, sorry. So, oh, I thought, I thought, sorry, sorry. I thought it's just my winners. Um, <laughs> it's my, my loser, I guess, is just the San Jose Sharks. So Why San Jose? Because... Yeah. 
they traded out of the top 15 for three picks and then their 27th pick they went off the 30 the 27th and their 34th picks that they got in that trade they went completely off the board okay so yeah I also, yeah, okay. I wasn't the only one who found it weird that they traded 11 for 27, 34, and 45. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I, I get what you mean. Uh, like, I was like, what on earth? Because when I read the trade, and I'm like, good for Arizona. Like, I think, yeah, if you're Arizona, boo, like, they moved boo. a lot, eh? They, they, really they did. And, their guys. and uh, they're probably one of my three winners of the draft. Um, I, I didn't get that from San Jose's perspective either. So San Jose eventually took Philip Bystad. So they would have passed on guys like Isaac Howard. Uh, great suit, by the way. Yager didn't agree, but whatever. Uh, again, guys like Owen Book, Beck, uh, Yager Ferkus, who Daniel was in love with. Um, <laughs> they they definitely passed on some guys. They Brad Lambert. Guys. Yeah, Brad Lambert. Shout out to Winnipeg, by the way. Mm-hmm. Winnipeg had a good draft. Getting Lambert and... Um, and uh, also getting McGrady. Rudger. Rudger McGrady. Yeah. I love that name. Mm-hmm. So we just give me a winner and why, and then we'll go to Alex. One winner, please. Oh, me? Yeah. And just um, explain your winner. I know you gave a few, but just explain it. Honestly, yeah, I think it's just going to be Montreal because they went in knowing what they wanted. Um, they got guys that I think are going to complement. And with what you went with is like you got what you needed at each, each place without going for – what what is something that like we're kind of lacking like you you did the mix of size you did the mix of what you need to stockpile with everything and i think they did foundational deals where they're just not going to let the prospects they're just not going to let things go and see how they are they actually went out and did a trade i know like the romanov thing was shocking but they see something with kirby doc and i think they took advantage of the blackhawks who in my mind, I actually put it as a loser too with San Jose because I don't know what they're doing either. Because with the picks oh, they had, yes. we, we will get to Chicago. Later. Okay, but that's just one example oh, where I, I think they took advantage of a team that doesn't know what they're doing. I feel like we're oh, gonna, yeah, okay. Um, I, I'm gonna go with Seattle just to not copy Daniel here, but I, Seattle was one of my winners. I think, you know, getting Shane Wright at, at four um, and then going on to draft wingers. Like Jagger Furkus, like Daniel, I know you like him, but everyone else seemed to like him as well. And it seems from what I have read is there could be a few more guys coming out of there who can make it to the NHL. Getting Goyette was really big for them. They yes. had a very a widespread draft, apparently. It was very wild, but I mean, just just writing Goyette a lot for me at least was was really nice. What about your loser? My loser? Yeah. I'm going to go with Chicago. See, okay. Okay, good. Because they were weird. Like, they're not only their trades, but some of their picks I thought were really weird. Um, yeah, just for – I thought the Alex DeBrincat deal was interesting. I don't get it. I, I do – I don't get the Kirby Doc deal. I just didn't really get what was going on. We'll say though. Uh, I almost said a weird draft, except taking Frank Nazar. I think we're all mad about Damn that. Damn Chicago for taking Frank Nazar. I will never yeah. forgive them for that. Yeah. I, and I will never forgive Montreal and the New York Islanders for letting that happen. That, yeah, that too. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I, because again, Daniel was with me, so he saw my pain in real time. And they took my I boy. Saw. I can't believe it. They Who did they take? Boy. They took Kevin Korchinski. I Who? didn't think he would go seven. I thought. Well, like I wanted him going to the Ducks tenth. <laughs> well, see, do you get that? Because the Ducks took all the French players in this draft, <laughs> oh. except except Pavel. So what? Pavel Mintikov. Yeah, he was no. the tenth overall. And uh, Mikhail Tournier, who went in the seventh to Montreal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they weren't happy. See, people are upset. A, a big thing with Montreal is v, like Vito with that pick is they sort of gave Frank Nazar. To, and I said this to Daniel because like, I got really mad about him. Like, we just gave Chicago the Nazar pick. Yeah. The last time Montreal gave a, a pick to the Blackhawks was to bring at. And then people were making the thing is if Nazar turns out better than Kirby Doc, it's not even losing Romanov either, by the way, because I was thinking about this. I thought Romanov was untouchable. 
So I did too. What happened? I did too. Yeah. Did, did, we, not, did we not have this discussion at the, I remember at the trade deadline, we were talking about who are the untouchables and I didn't even have Robotov in my untouchables. So he, here's how I, I, I kind of wonder if the way they look at it, right. Is that they have a, a log jam at left D, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can think of like, what's Romanov. The first thing you think of is probably his, obviously the big booming body, right. Right. You can probably see Gooley's capable of that. Jack Eye's capable of that. He started to become a puck mover, but guys like Norland are in that. I wonder if they just saw the prospects in there and obviously bring up Lane Hudson. He could maybe be one of those guys. Really can't wait to talk about him a little later. Um, but uh, I wonder if they just saw that they had players like Romano, but what he could do when maybe parts they could do better than him. And they just thought, and we, maybe we don't know how the contract negotiations went. I don't think they even started, to be honest. But um, and 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 Kent, you said there's nothing to do with him being Russian. Um, That's what everyone thought. Even the people beside us, they, wait, really? they asked me that. Yeah, they asked me that. Yeah, they're like, oh, they're just trying to get all the Russians out of Montreal. Mm, well, like, well, that's yeah. interesting. Mikhail Sergachev probably thinks that. Um, but it, it was. Uh, <laughs> I just wonder if they see that he was expendable. Which I mean, it, it's just it's. It's it's unfortunate. Every every any 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 time like like a member of that cup final team goes now. It's 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 very sad. Um, my big winner of the draft. I can't say Montreal. I really really liked Columbus's draft because now all of a sudden I think their defense is just sort of set for the rest of their lives. Rurensky with Mitch, Mitch Kev. I'm not going to say it right. And David Yurichek, I thought was really, really nice for them to get. Um, the like the Blackhawks have just very quietly, and they oh, and something that really bothered me, they gotten they got da- uh, Jordan Dume in the third round, who I was really the hoping Blackhawks to have. or the yeah. uh, the Blue Jackets, the Blue, the Jackets. Blue Jackets. So uh, with Machkov, Yurichek, and Dume, those were the big ones for the where I looked at Columbus, and I'm like, that's a very good draft by them. They re-signed um, Adam Boquist right before the draft as well. They did, yes. To did. a very, very good cap hit. Uh, I'm just they, trying they to are, like... They are set forever. Um, mm-hmm. Question for you guys. Yep. How did uh, your top uh, t- 12s go? Okay, you know what? I'll have it. I'm going to get I'm gonna get it up. I'm going to get it up, actually. And then we can... Uh, I don't even want to think about mine because I had Sapkowski fifth. <laughs> So it's gonna be uh, it's probably gonna be great to look at. So I had Shane Wright one, yeah, Cooley yeah. two, Yurichek three, Nemich four, <laughs> Slap five, uh, Savoy six, Joachim Camel seven. Oh no! Oh. Uh, Frank Nazar eight, Cutter Gauthier nine, Casper ten. Uh, of course, I hate the Detroit got him. Uh, Jonathan Leckery Mackey eleventh. I'm so I called that Vancouver were going to take him too uh, with Daniel, and then um, I had Pavel Minchikov at twelve. Okay, Daniel. Uh, me, I had Shane Wright at one. Yeah. Nemich at Nemic at second. Slavkovsky at third. Uh, Cooley at fourth. I mm-hmm. uh, had. Wait, was it? Oh yeah, Cutter Gautier fifth. That one I got right. You did. You did. Yes, and then your check sixth. Got it. Um, I think I had Camel. Yes, Camel. I'm checking it now. Camel seventh. I want to know why uh, he found Casper so eighth. Mm-hmm. Who would you? Oh, you got that. that yeah. Is, um, I can't believe you guessed the Detroit pick. You actually <laughs> should get a reward for that. Thank you, Michikov at ninth. Korchinski at 10. Geeky at 11. Oh, I got that one. You did? No, nice. And then 12th was, uh, yeah, I cannot say his name again. Who's? He went to Vancouver 50. Gregory Mackey? Gregory Mackey. Mackey. I had him at 12. Oh, okay. and I got mad because of your disrespect for Frank Nazar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I didn't have, so I don't have 11 and 12 here, but I have 10. Um, I have, so I have Wright, mm-hmm. Slavkovsky at two. Yeah. Cooley at three, uh, Nemich at four, Cutter Gauthier at five. I can't believe I, we got that right, Daniel. I He's the lie. big I'm center just, that I just, silly loves. I just, I can't believe we got that right. And like my reasoning for it was crazy. Uh, your check at six, yeah. uh, Savoy or Savoy at seven. <laughs> Such a habit. That's going to be a problem. Even Michelle Lacroix on the PA. Yeah. 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 Uh, Kemmel at eight, Geeky at nine, and then Minchikov at 10. 
Jesus. You know what? We uh we did pretty all right. We we were, hey, man, yeah. I'll take four. One, two, three, four. I'll take four picks. It just uh, camel really got us. Uh yeah, camel camel kind of screwed us all there, didn't he? Uh, the team who are my losers, by the way. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. I mean, cut you off. No, there. no, it's it's fine. I don't, I don't really. Um, <laughs> mine's gonna be LA because I'm mad at them because they took Jack Hughes. Ooh. Um, by the way, could cute moment. The moment he was taken, Kent Hughes uh got got away from the Habs desk and yeah. went to the bottom of the stage to welcome him. A few hours, I think Marty St. Louis did too, and they oh, they cool. just they cut in front of the LA stack. <laughs> And uh, when they embraced the Bell Center, gave them uh, gave them a really nice sort of uh, big sure. try there. Um, yeah. Beside that, like I'm just trying to think, who do I not like? Buffalo. I'm looking at Buffalo, right? And they took three centers, which is always smart to do. And I really like that they got Savoy. I'm mad at Pittsburgh because they took Owen Pickering, uh, as <laughs> I always am. But like I don't know who else I can say I hated really. Chicago was just mix and weird, but I don't want to take Alex saying it too. Um, and it's just, it feels like there were a lot of guys who just sort of Edmonton, actually Edmonton, 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 because they got Reed nothing Schaefer. done. They got, yeah, <laughs> they got Reed, nothing why? done. They got nothing done. Pulley Harvey's not done. How do you not draw anything from Pulley Harvey? I just they didn't get much done. I didn't yeah, like but it. they have all their, the last five first round picks and Toronto doesn't. So it doesn't matter. Uh, According to Bob. I love that tweet you had. Yes. I love that tweet. Thanks, um, I appreciate someone sees that. What was it? I'm just going to <laughs> trying to scratch off some of my notes as we go in the last thing. Yeah. I already said it, but I didn't cross it off. Cooley, there is on the three. Uh, go from the NCAA to an NCAA arena. Um, <laughs> signs. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Notes about them running into my mom. Very good. Okay. Um, geez, there's so much. We have a uh, lot. Three centers for Buffalo. Very good. Romanov is an Islander. Let's talk about that from the Islanders' point of view. Not a bad pickup for them. I feel like Len Morello is going to love a guy like uh, Romanov. Yeah, oh, that defensive sure. guy. Um, he's put up a lot of offensive numbers, but he will. Yeah, he'll be like a dependable guy, I think, for for them. And they didn't really replace like they're not. You can't replace Devon Taves. No, yeah, so I mean, like no. that. You can't. But it's just adding back onto that lineup and getting a young guy as well, because their their defense will will continue to get better. By the way, uh, Romanov for Islanders fans is puck moving. They're getting to a point where he just has to learn to make that right first pass when he's bringing you know, the the right play when he's getting into the zone. That's Romanov is he's he he still needs a bit more seasoning, but the tools are there. And uh, anyone's going to be scared coming into your zone when he's guarding the blue line. Uh, what type of seasons? Uh, hmm? What type of seasoning? Uh, just you know, just like little details. I just had to finish okay. off. Um, and uh, he's always been a, he's, he's a high energy player. <laughs> Sorry, high energy player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I said they wouldn't play him overtime because he burnt out his batteries. So, yeah, uh. figure that out. Um, yeah, Winnipeg, we said getting McGrady and uh, Brad Lambert was was pretty interesting. Oh, just Brad Lambert figures it out and starts trying a little bit. Um, <laughs> nice. and then McGrady, yeah, a lot of people are really high on, especially our good friend Mike. So, we'll be U.S. Uh, captain. Yes, yes. Um, GM of the year, halfway through the draft. Weird. I forgot it was happening. Uh, it was Joe Sack, who the Bell what? Center loved. Yes. Bell Center loved him. It was, the, it was Stanley Cup winner Joe Sack won the GM of the Correct. year award. He did. He did. Nordique's Crazy. legend. Yeah. I'm happy for him. As am I. I mean, don't He's agree good. with it. Does Quebec still love him, like, from the Quebec years? Well, I mean, Daniel, you were there. I heard the rest of that Quebec yeah. crowd. And they, they sounded there. there was a Joe chant going. <laughs> I was surprised by that. But, I mean, they like Joe Sapp. Well, I think they like the abs. Again, I think there's always a, a spiritual connection to the abs from the from the Habs fans. Uh, can I make some constructive criticism? Sure. Don't do that again. What, the presenting it halfway through the first round? Don't do it. That was kind of weird. Yeah. Why was it so slow in general? Because it's the it? NHL draft. So why don't got, they do the awards? Slow. Why don't they do the awards at the award show? Why didn't Daniel, you just, exactly? Uh, uh, Daniel, I, I I wish I knew, but uh, some things are too confidential. Very weird. Uh, very weird. Again, shout out Isaac Howard for the great suit in Tampa Bay. He just falling right. Yeah, gonna, I'd like to say something. I'd like to say something. Kill, we, I mentioned kill it there. We're going to probably tag him in the post about this, but 
right when I saw Isaac Howard come like come down from his seat, I'm like, that's Alex Baumgartner. Yes, I yes, like that, that. The way he's dressed, so the way he, like he had a swagger to him when he was walking. Like that's Alex Baumgartner. I love that's how he so had funny. the main Star Wars theme playing as well. It really worked. It really, <laughs> really worked. Uh, so that was good. Um, he calls himself Iceman. Remember that. I mean, Ice I man, I, yeah, I call him something forever. He's like, I'm the best looking guy here, so I might as well be dressed the best. Nice, not bad. Minnesota not also bad. had a really good draft, by the way. Yeah, some people were saying, like I think it was Jeff Merrick saying, doubt the wild at your own risk. Um, because they take Gurov, they get Liam Algren, as well as some guys in the later rounds that people really, really like. Listen, once you get past the third round, I was getting a little like, I don't know who these guys are. Not gonna lie, I got pretty tired. <laughs> like, so yeah. when you and your mom left, the people around me also left. So I was the only person in like the first four rows. It was Daniel, section. it was Daniel and the media just there. Yeah, basically, like uh, <laughs> most people left. And I was like probably one of the last like in the section we were in, Adam. I was yeah. probably one of five people left. In the seventh round. Uh, did the crowd go wild when they took the French guy with the last pick? Me? Yeah, they did. Um, one guy they really did, I think it was also because of his family, was, um, what's his name again? I, I, I don't, I know his last name, but not his, his last first name. name. Last name is Mancini. Who took um, it? Where is it now? Um Oh, Victorio Mancini oh. when he was drafted oh. by wait, the wait, wait. Rangers. Wait, no. Oh, they said it. I'm like, I want Adam to guess. Who, <laughs> oh, the guy that read, everyone did the, the, the video of the guy going, where's the gabagool? <laughs> that's got to be <laughs> that, that's got to be the most New York guy that could have. And he's if, and he's not even from New York. He's from Michigan. <laughs> they freaked out still. his entire family, extended family, people like they were cheering for him even uh, they, when like the next like two other picks are being made. They, they must have had an entire section just for that family. They man. did. They had probably like 15 <laughs> people with them. Oh, wait, to, wait, that seems low. That seems low. It's got to be more. Shout out to Ivan Zigalov, who was the last uh, guy picked in the draft. The goalie? By the abs. Not bad. Uh, you'll, you'll, have a, you'll have a fun career, I bet. It's the abs. Oh, yeah. so, uh, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, okay, you know, this is more. Hold on. I'm just going through everything that is. Uh, the Leafs, we should get to that. What was it? They moved down, was it eight spots to Dutton Thir- 13. 13. 13. 13. Okay. 13 spots. They actually, the they, actually, they didn't even, apparently, if you, depending on who you ask, they might not even have had a pick because they just traded Mrazic for a first. So I, I guess it so, just depends on who you ask. Remember last episode when we made the point of when you get to the draft, you don't look at the picks, you look at the order? Yeah, no one did I, that. Yeah, I think people need to remember that. Uh, so they end up taking Fraser Minton. In the second round, that's the guy who they moved down to get. Mm-hmm. Um, but as someone who's been very critical about Dubis and his and his signings and always having to dump dump some stuff down, I actually thought this was very good, clever business. Uh, I think the yeah, Oilers least- kind of did the same with Cassian, but but yeah. Kyle Dubis did his checklist of smart move for the draft by uh, trading down and obviously the the signature cap dump move. So. <laughs> Good, good, good for you. This. See, the thing is, is like you can cr- people can criticize, and you're fair to criticize it, right? Like, but you're at least being like, you, you like, you're using context. Um, the thing here is, though, is we have to when you look at this trade, you then have to also realize that literally, how many other GMs have done this, and it's like. So you're criticizing just you're criticizing Dubis, but I want to be clear: you're also criticizing Ken Holland, Julian Brisebois. Um, who else has done a move like this? I'm sure. I'm I, I'm sure I'm missing someone. Lou, yeah, Lou, Lou uh, Nick Letty, I think. Like we can keep going. Um, no man, I liked him. I you had to get rid of Mrazek, right? Like I, I he yeah. was not coming back. Um, despite what he says, it, despite what Kyle Dubas might say to the media, because again, they don't tell the truth to the media. Can like our people, whatever. Um, sure, man. Fraser Min. I think after pick twenty, because you know a lot of picks went off the board after pick twenty. In my opinion, that if you're picking between twenty five and forty five, there wasn't really much of a difference based on the other scouting reports and the mock drafts that 
have been published, I don't think they they did poorly with this at all. Um, one like you mentioned Ken Holland, and that's the example I'm going to give. That sure. they literally with the 25th pick just made that trade, and then a few picks later, Ken Holland surrenders a second and a third to do the exact same thing. Yeah. Oh, and they yeah, go off the board with their own a, pick. A very interesting. That's a very interesting point. The I thing about completely though completely forgot they gave up an extra second and a third. Yeah, for so, the same I know what the criticism is the same cap hit, all pretty much same term. Hmm. Daniel, you bring up an interesting point, but we're not. That's we're not going to talk about that. That's too much uh, common sense. Um. Well, I think the room, the rumor going around that I heard, which was mainly from Steve Dangle and then just people retweeting it on Twitter, was that uh, they everyone seems to think that it uh, it was Liam Ogren that the Leafs wanted, mm-hmm. and obviously when they when he was taken nineteenth, uh, then the phone started moving. Fair enough. Yeah, because they were yeah, yeah, yeah. And because that would have been they were supposed to be picked 25. Yeah, so mm-hmm. six yeah, picks yeah, before. Yeah. And Auburn was a weird, yeah, no, because I think Auburn was 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 originally protected. Now that makes sense. That makes sense. I'd like um, to um point out something. Uh if we're talking about the Leafs pick, I mentioned to Adam before you were gonna leave. The uh <laughs> looking back at my mock draft, yeah, I had Thomas Homara going. 25th overall, and he went like at the later half of the third round. Ooh. Ouch. Um, um, j- sorry, I was just just to add, I, I thought their draft was, uh, the Leafs in particular, was interesting because they took zero defensemen, which yeah. either means they, that's, they just didn't see anyone available, or that's how they view their prospect pool. So, because remember, Minton, yeah. Nick yep. Moldenhauer, Dennis Hildeby, who's a goalie, o- overage Nikita goalie, Grimbenkin, and Brandon Lizowski. No one from the Sioux Greyhounds, by the way. No, no one from the OHL. But they got a giant goalie in the fourth round. Yeah, over uh, overager. Um, like maybe I, I guess that's uh, that maybe tells you what they think of their current prospect pool up front, which undoubtedly has been not great forward wise uh, recently, maybe because like four or how many years ago now they just had an influx of forward prospects, but I don't know. What do I know about uh, drafting and developing? Um, I I wonder that's how they view their prospect pool because they do Uh, have some decent guys that could come out on the back end. mm Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about more of the back end stuff a little later. Yep. Uh, sorry, it's all over the place today because nope. there's just there's just so much stuff. Um, I want to give a shout out to um our boy, Which Ivan Mirosichenko. Yes. Yes. Uh, what a surprise! Um, the Caps took him. <laughs> um, the Caps took him. I believe he was twentieth. Yep. Yep. Um, so I w- I was really really happy that that um I was happy that someone took him. And it just sort of makes sense that it was the Caps. Just feels uh, feels like it makes sense all the time. With they them. do love Russians, the Washington they do. Capitals. Yeah. Like Alex's favorite player, hmm? Alex favorite Alexiev. Player. Oh, <laughs> I had Nero on here, but now I can't find where exactly I crossed That's it off. But I had him going twenty six to the Ducks in my, but they got Nathan Gauthier, so. I got yeah, to hear that the, the the crowd cheer for him, so that was fun. If you draft a French guy in Montreal and they love you, it was it was so easy. Um, by the way, we had this. Uh, I said this. We had like the Sportsnet guys in front of us. David Amber, built, massive dude, nice uh, guy too. Well, from what I can see, it was very nice to a lot of kids who wanted his autograph. Yeah, it was taking pictures with the kids. I liked. Okay, this is one thing I liked about that. Pierre Maguire before they would conti- they would start, he would fist bump everybody. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, quick. Oh my God. There's just there's so much guys. Yeah, I'm really. Su- were you guys as surprised as I was that Pulley Harvey didn't get dealt of the draft? A little bit. A great. little bit. I but I uh, obviously because I think we we look at what happened with Lyas Anderson mm-hmm. as like the prime comparable. 
And that's what happened, right? I believe he got drafted on the second day of the draft. Uh, he got dealt on the second day of the draft. He got drafted on the first day. Um, and I, I don't, I just, I think we're more like, I don't know if we're going to see him for a draft pick. I think we're more likely to see him if, as a player swap. I if think I'm so being no, honest. I think so too. I think in my mind at the draft, I thought that it was going to be one of those, you know, kind of things that GMs always do that once they trade picks, they're going to recoup some form of asset that's comparable to it. So once I saw that salary dump, I assumed Puyarvi was gone for another late second or an early third. Yeah. It, well, like the thing for me is, is just if you're Ken Holland and you need, yes, you Puyarvi was in your lineup, right? So mm-hmm. you need to now find a way to replace him. Are you going to trade him for a pick that's going to be here in potentially three or four years? Or would you rather trade him for some for someone that you might get right now? Like they did it last year, right? Remember, they traded Warren um, Ethan Bear for Warren Fogle. This is so a bad trade, in my opinion. Did but uh, yeah, I, I could see that too. Um, I'm trying to think of what would be an even swap for him. Who is a troubled prospect right now? Not Jack Campbell signing rights. <laughs> if they do that, that I swear to God, Edmonton. By the way, yeah, shout rights out to Ilya Mikheyev. No, no. Charlie, shout out to Edmonton. They're going back to your outro jerseys next year. Yeah. Uh, oh, is- thank goodness. I love. I didn't like them at all. I thought they were like a perpetually retro reverse jerseys. I was gonna say maybe DeBrus, but nah, the value is not there, and he rescinded the trade offer, didn't he? Yeah. Which is uh, not uh, for Yarvi for Zachary Sanishin from Ed- from the uh, Senators. No, 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 no. Oh goodness gracious! Um. So first off, by the way, you know what's really funny, Alex? What? So before either uh, before the first and second days of the draft, they do road call right to be like Anaheim here, and yeah. that's when you get to certain teams, the Habs or the the team. I'm assuming every host the booze. That was really funny, but it's like, why are we doing road call? Who's going to be late? That's a great question. I wonder uh, who was late the first time for them to have to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And why it was makes, it Ottawa? It may, you uh, said it. No, another me. thing. So in the arena, there was a French Canadian host. Uh, and the whole time it was like, he was Deadpool. He's like, here come the stars. Maybe they're going to draft a defenseman because they need one. Or maybe they're going to acquire one. Wink, wink. <laughs> He was, uh, he was a really good part of the night, by the way, I wanted to mention. Uh, mentioned that stuff. Um, I didn't like how little teams mentioned the passing of Brian Marchment, by the way. Didn't feel like a lot of them did. That rubbed me the wrong way. I wanted to mention that. Um, Sorry, it was, say, that like say that again? That uh, not a lot of the teams, when they made their draft selections, kind of made, ha- like put a moment aside to acknowledge the passing of Brian Marchment. Sure, every team put out a statement, but they didn't. I didn't like how not a lot of them did something at the draft. But it was really the thing that Mike Greer, new GM, by the way, since the last time we recorded that, that happened, first black GM in NHL history. Uh, it was he gave a really nice little speech about Brian Marchment too that I thought was uh, was really nice. Um, yeah, it was great. Why we're here? You guys got like a quick thought on uh, Mike Greer being hard? I think. I, I, no, oh, sorry, go ahead, Dan. No, no, Dan, you go. Okay, I think I like it. I think you know, long time guy. He's been with the organization a while. Um, he was one of those character players that just really stuck with the Sharks. That they went for those rebuilds, those contending teams, and it, it was just one of those guys that I thought that it's eventually going to happen. So I'm happy it happened with the franchise that he knows best. Yeah, and they seem they seem to want a former player to be a GM, which is interesting. Um, I've never really heard of a team like progress to, sorry, pursue um, a former player and that's about it, but it's always cool. It's always cool to see. Obviously we we're seeing it uh, around the league with, with other players joining front offices and uh, both male and female. So it'll be cool to see what it looks like down the road. I like that there's that patience there because um, the only one comparable I have with this is the Islanders. Remember when um, Garth Snow retired as the backup goalie? Yeah. He went from like assistant general manager to general manager right after he retired. 
Oh. <laughs> I don't know. He didn't do a super, super bad. I mean, it, they didn't get to where they wanted to, but, you know, yeah. it's pretty good for a guy that he just retired and became a GM. So, so I like what the Sharks taking their he, time. He does have quite a bit of work to do, though. Uh, yeah. That being said, good luck to him. So, That's why I don't agree with his first major trade. You know, I might be wrong. It just it just really kind of bothered me. Yeah, it went from eleventh uh, to twenty seventh. Another hiring, by the way, uh, I think it was Kate, it's Kate Madigan, the first female G A A G M in New Jersey history, and she, I think she was the one who made the Nemich pick. Uh, crowd gave her a nice little round of applause too. You could tell she was nervous. She was stumbling a bit over her words, but I thought that was a nice little moment. It was nice in New Jersey to let her uh, make the call. By the way, uh, Nick Suzuki's the captain, right? Because he was on stage for the first pick. So he, he fulfilled the prophecy of Shea Weber. Uh, I, Have they officially rescinded that? What do you mean? Oh, the captaincy? The captaincy. Well, he's oh, like, he's gone. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. I completely forgot he got traded. Yeah, I, I know. Wow, I com- It has it's been on all of the hat. It it it, it it has been a wild two weeks. By virtue of the trade, Evgeny Dadanov is now the captain. It's just weird. Yeah, you know, have they? Re- that's what I meant. I obviously meant have they rescinded it from Evgeny Dadanov? That's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, and obviously, by the way, uh, I mentioned it like two, three times. Uh, my favorite pick of the draft for Montreal was Lane Hudson. Yeah. Uh, that guy has potential. I'm really excited to see what becomes of him. Unlike another defenseman, because Logan Mayu was at the draft, unfortunately. Yes. Um, and he's in the developmental camp that's happening soon. So uh, let's see if the guy uh, – I hate when people are like, oh, he was such a nice guy when I met him. Of course he was going to be on his best behavior. Shut up. Anyway, um, let's, let's see if they make the right decision. Uh, shout out to the Canucks drafting another Elias Pettersson. <laughs> Not that Elias Pettersson. But this was – so last year was the draft of the brothers, right? Um, obviously, yeah. there was the, – there was the, 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 the Colorado took the other Makar. Um, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago took the other duck and then proceeded to trade one of them the year later. And then there was the process of, 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 of the Blackhawks were going to try and get both the Jones brothers. And they're they trying did. to trade one. Um, and then this was the year of I'm drafting this guy, but it's not actually him. Again, L.A., Jack Hughes, not that Jack Hughes. Um, the Canucks getting Elias, but not that Elias Patterson. That was really funny. They drafted a guy exactly named Elias Patterson. Uh, so that was funny. Was so, yeah, he also black, Swedish? I he looked it. He looked it. The blonde hair and everything. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so the Blackhawks they Let's trade Kirby. They trade Kirby Doc when they're a rebuilding team. It looks like they're not going to qualify Dylan Strom or Alex uh, or um or I'm Dominic like Kubalik. And the trade for DeBrincat was seventh overall, 39th overall. And a third rounder in 2024. I don't want to hear anyone tell me about the big number to bring crack gets at the end of the extension. I don't care. The, 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 first off, good for the Sens. Great, great business. Imagine yeah. any fleece by the Sens. But See, I don't think it was a fleecing. I just. I don't get. I So I don't understand. People- I don't understand why they traded Alex to bring yeah. I'll agree. I'll agree with you there. Yeah. But I don't think it's a fleece. I mean, seventh overall is not like I don't get why Philly didn't get fifth. Why they were opposed to that? It's to bring because they wanted Cutter Gauthier, who is isn't he supposed mm-hmm. to be like a goal scorer? So what, is he just bigger to bring cap? Maybe hey, can he, is he going to score? And he's a center, game? so I don't know. Um, I just like to point out that I mentioned this uh, already, but it just made me laugh that they gave up sixth in the Seth Jones trade and then traded arguably their best player for the seventh pick. So it's funny that people pointed out that at one point, I want to say maybe with that dog pick or something, the Blackhawks pass on the defenseman to the only then as, as, a, as, yeah, there it was. And in the process, now they try and get Korchinski, and part of that was trading away to Brinkat, who was arguably their best player. Uh, it's funny. Sorry, funny you mentioned that they had sixth, then traded their best player to, to get seventh. Do you know who also did something like that? Um, oh, the Arizona Coyotes. The Arizona Coyotes, who had their uh, 
what overall was it? They had their uh, first round pick forfeited, then proceeded to trade their best player, Oliver Ekman Larson, for Vancouver to Vancouver, who I believe was a pick or two later than what they yeah. what they were supposed to pick. So, you know, my favorite thing about the Debrinkat trade, by the way, what's that? That that everyone in Ottawa owes thanks to Matt Murray. Because if he had not have waived his contract, it is no trade clause, apparently, he was going to go, what was it? The report was Buffalo. he was going to go to Buffalo, yeah. and it would involve them swapping their first-round selections. So Matt Murray... What, see, I stick. keep seeing that. Sorry, but what's the core? I don't understand. I don't get it. Because instead of using the swapping Ottawa and Buffalo's first-round pick, yeah. Ottawa used the seventh overall pick to go get Alex to bring that. So instead of them wasting that pick to dump him there. So it would have cost him seventh overall to, to dump Matt. Apparently Murray. they would have had to, apparently the deal was to swap first round picks. Yes. Oh, I to think, swap and, first. Yes. Round so picks. They would have gotten, I think it would have been the uh, Ottawa. Ottawa would have fallen down to, I think would have been the Vegas pick, which I think was 15 or 16, I think 16 and Ottawa, yeah, Ottawa goes to 16 and Buffalo would keep nine and move up to seven. So man, if the, if the, I swear God, if the Leafs trade for him and they don't get a boatload, I'm just I'm going to come on this show and rip okay. someone to shreds. And there it is because it Freeman tweeted today that it looks like talks between the Leafs and the Sens involving Matt Murray has picked up. That ruined my day. Like Elliot Freeman, I know you're not listening, but you ruined my day. Like legitimately ruined my day. So the goaltending in Toronto is a big topic right now. Obviously, they hired the new goalie coach. His name is Curtis Sanford. Chris Sanford. Curtis Sanford. Curtis Sanford. Curtis Sanford. Who? St. Louis Blues legend. Who worked for the Canucks in the AHL as their goalie coach? People like Spencer Martin, so maybe that's a good sign. Um, Same time, they they promoted Dr. Haley Wickenheiser. But looking at the goaltending sort of carousel that's come Mm. on. Vitek Vanacek is now a New Jersey Devil, which I was surprised by. Um, obviously, Alexander Georgiev was traded for some picks to Colorado from the and, Rangers and, and got paid. an extension, which was Jeez. I don't think I like Colorado's goaltending now, but discussion for another day. On top of that, Mark Andre Fleury has resigned for two years in Minnesota, three point five per. Uh, we can talk about Taubin and Garen a little later. Um, and on top of that, Billy Huso writes traded, then signs an extension with the Detroit Red Wings. So with that, it's either, and I want to say, was it Dreger or CJ afterward that said the least priority is now Jack Campbell? But I know how accurate that is because today there was a, a tweet again. This one for sure was from Dreger saying it was a friendly conversation yesterday that Dubes and Campbell would have had, but it's not productive. So maybe that then puts the least into the space of, acquiring Matt Murray because I is it a thing of maybe they couldn't afford the high free agency price of Kemper so it's, if Matt Murray is your I I will not watch a single game next year if, if he's Matt a Murray, starter if he's a starter you I'll, I'm saying it dead right now if he's like this if someone's injured and he has to be the starter like there's there's fine but if he's like the defined starter I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it I'm not doing that. I'm not doing like if he's I said it in the group chat today. If he's going to play 25 games, okay. I I think I can live with 25 games of Matt Murray. It just has not been it for him. Right? It hasn't been it for him the last few years. He's been injured. It, it's just it hasn't worked out. Uh, there's things obviously that went on went on off the ice which clearly affected him and I think it would affect anybody. It's just, I can't do it. I just want one. Like, I just, I just want a, a goalie. I just want a goalie. You know what I mean? A sort of reliable, know what you're getting goaltender. If you, okay. The, so I don't, is there a reason that everyone just is assuming memory is like coming to be the starter? Is there like a potential reason for that? I'm I'm dead serious because like it's not it's not my first thought that he's going to be the starter. So he, I would wonder if it's because initially you think the money. Now, obviously, if this deal happens, there has to be salary retention. Mm-hmm. I don't see the Leafs bringing him on for the full what is it six in some spare change million. 
Don't even remind me. Yeah. Here, here's how it's looking in the way of goaltending right now. And you would think it's safe to assume that they would want two new goalies, right? I don't know if you want Shogren as the backup, right? No. Like he, he, he was the Band-Aid over the – or the, the duct tape over the leaky pipe. He did his job, but he's not the long-term one. Yeah. Is with all the carousels going around – I'm ex- this is UFAs because I don't want to have the, the Mackenzie Blackwood discussion right no. now. Um, the UFA goaltenders, Kemper, who's probably the bell of the ball, and people are saying maybe Washington because we know their goaltending struggles. A few different teams are – if Kemper's probably the one getting overpaid, right? So then after that, you have Thomas Is Price. he the one getting overpaid, though? I think you're missing a name. So I think Jack Campbell is going to be the one who gets overpaid, but that's just me. Oh, hold on. Uh, Grice, Matt, oh, Jones, Matt, Hopi, oh, uh, and then Jack Campbell. Well, Hopi might not play again, too. Uh, oh. So it shows you. So it's basically it's it's starters. It's Kemper and Campbell on the UFA market. Mm-hmm. And Unless the growth probably go. getting overpaid. Yes. Now the question. Now the question is, who would you rather overpay? Kemper, because he just won a cup. There we go. Thirty-two, though, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, he could goaltender his age a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Right. And now, he doesn't have twenty years of knee surgery, so he's fine. Mm. So when I saw the when I saw the Vili Huso extension, <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's a big one. Like I, I wonder, I, I wonder if that. Because he was he was going to be a UFA, right? Yeah. I understand he's in a different situation. He's 26, 26 27. 27, yeah. 27. Um, and I get it. You know, this was his second full season with the Blues, like proper full season, um, if I can do math correctly. I get his situation is a little bit different, but I wonder how that changes what term looks like on a deal for both Darcy Kemper and Jack Campbell, because those were the three big starters, right? We knew Billy Huso was going to somewhat either Billy Huso or Jordan Bennington were going to go and Billy Huso was going to get paid to be a starter somewhere. We, we know that basically right now, Freeman has talked about this without basically saying it, there's tampering going on with the goaltending market right now. Oh, oh, like sure. it's not even funny how obvious it is. <sighs> so, and the the five million started for a goaltender has been pretty camp. I think it's it's all but a guarantee Campbell's going to get five million dollars. Kemper, people were talking about the hours price. Not to mention Kemper did something this year that no other goaltender did, and that was win a Stanley Cup. So like he he automatically is is in a tier. And it's it's the effect that other guys like Nakushkin and, and Kadri are going to get right. So obviously, yeah, you you go with that guy. Not to mention it's I don't I swear I don't. I like Jack Campbell. It's just, I still, there's a part of me just still doesn't trust him. I'm sorry, Jack. I just don't trust you still. Um, and that, here's another thing, by the way, about the, dropped my pen, sorry, that I think about the Leafs and why I wouldn't get Matt Murray is it's the same problem that maybe with Freddie Anderson, Jack Campbell, um, Peter Morazic. And Peter Morazic, you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. And this is nothing against, it's just the way this injury injury issues, which is why you offer sheet Jake Ottinger. Thank you very much. Yeah. And but and that's the thing. If you're going to get Matt Murray, uh, he, I mean, I mean this in, in so, it, with so much respect, he cannot be more than a backup right now. At the, it, for the Leafs, for the Leafs, he cannot be more than a backup right now. You know what I he saw? He can't be a one B. He can be a backup. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't get this person's uh, Twitter handle, but think of it like this: uh, Let's say Murray halfway retained, he can be the backup, whatever here. And to sweeten it, you get your McKayev replacement, and the person mentioned Connor Brown. Connor Brown. Let's go. I can do it. I can live with Connor Brown. He, he love we love Connor, Connor Brown. Brown. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I do love Connor Brown. And, oh my God, that second line is going to be uh, Connor Brown. John Tavares and William Nylander. You heard it here um, first. Remember when uh, when C. Dangle was like, if Morazic's the starter, it's take the over in every game and don't watch any uh-huh. of them. That's how the Leafs could be this year is every game. Everyone is 8-6 game like the one against Detroit, and it's going to be hilarious to watch. Um, I am pro offer sheet Jake Onger, by the way. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I was on that bandwagon, but honestly, I could be wrong. I might have not been, but I am now on that bandwagon. How much would that cost, like for him? I don't know. 
Well, let me double check. A lot of money. I'll put Beliefs, it like that. I don't know how it exactly would work, but would you be again? Oh, they don't own their That'd second or fourth next year, so I don't know how all the logistics would work unless they do one of the big deals that because the what is there a certain threshold that's first and a third for the offer sheet calculator? Yeah, I, I'm looking for that calculator right now. Please do because uh, I wonder if it's a certain amount they could do it. I don't so think a, they, a first and a third is between 4.2 and 6.3 million. Okay. Yeah, they could do it. What's the next? Do you have a Dallas matches that? No, the no. one below or the one above? Above, please. I can tell you, but there is a first, second, and third. Toronto's not eligible unless they trade with Seattle to, to get, get their second round pick back. Pull up Brian Burke. Oh, well then. Hmm. Okay, here's what we're gonna here's what's gonna happen, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they still have to re-sign Jason Robertson, right? Yes. That's one thing they have to do. They have 18 million dollars in cap space. Yes. Here's how we're gonna get them not to off to match the offer sheet. Okay. They're gonna let we're gonna let them sign Jason Robertson first. Okay. Then we're gonna get you're gonna get Ken you personally, Adam. Okay. Personally. Oh, are, shot. okay. All right. Are going to call, you know, we're going to get oh, Kent Hughes. Call LA to call. No, to call Dallas. Yeah. And trade them. Jeff Petrie. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say you want Montreal to throw the offer sheet. I'm like, no, no, no. I want you personally to call Kent Hughes and make them trade Jeff Petrie to the Dallas stars. I'm waiting for that deal. Okay. And then just, it messes up their cap. Exactly. Let's and then we're all, we're all fair and square. We're all good. If Andre's agent wants to be cheeky, look at the goalie market right now and see if you can get an offer sheet that's going to get maximum value for your client. Mm-hmm. I, I think if, if you're a smart enough agent, that's what you do. Sorry, Stars fan. I, it's, it's, but it, it would be really funny. It would be really funny. Um, okay, where else could we go? Shout out the schedule was released. Um, big opening to the season for the Leafs and Habs. They're facing each other. What a surprise. But for the first time since 2013. The Canadians open their season at home. Wow, that's a while. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I know. I Are you know. gonna go? Yeah, I've been to most of those, and it's been really annoying to for it to have not been the first game of the season. Um, but yeah, no, I thought that was I thought that was nice to see two Saturday night games against the Islanders, which is annoying. Did you guys get to look at it for Anaheim and Toronto yet? I did not. Not really. Fair enough. Let me check uh, it out. You should. You should. Uh, Chris Letang. Oh boy. He's extended by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, uh, Daniel and I were actually in the line to go to Schwartz as it happened in Montreal. Which is uh, funny because uh, Alan Walsh client. He is French, yes. Oh, yeah, and he's French. And too. he was brought out to make the Owen Pickering pick, by the way, which made me. Oh, very- really? Well, yeah, he, yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, he's a French guy, and the crowd loved it. And, did they, and then they, did, they should have announced the extension at the draft. That would have been really cool. Uh, been it. So it's six years. 6.1 is the AAV, 6.1 million. The first four years is a full no move clause, according to Cap Friendly. The last two years is a modified no move, notified no trade. It says both, so I don't know what that quite means. Uh, <laughs> and the last two years also have signing bonuses in them, which is interesting. Uh, this will bring Chris Letang by the time this deal is done to, I believe, 40 years of age. 41. 41, sorry. I can't do math. He's from Montreal. No, that's that's okay. um, so he's going to retire a penguin. That's nice, but he may finish on injury reserve. Yeah, this is the AAV. I mean, like for what he produces, the AAV is solid. It's solid. Solid, right? It's just six years. He just gave him that uh, life security, knowing he's not going to finish the contract as a player. So... I think this is, I call this the Chris Letang send-off. Well, right now they're going to be celebrating the Evgeny Malcolm one because it doesn't look like he's coming back. What's mm-hmm. this? Apparently we told his teammates they, the Penguins told him he's not good anymore. Man. Okay. Let me ask you, you guys this. Mm. You obviously, you guys didn't like when Marner was negotiating through the media. No, I hate I, that. I, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of it. I can only imagine how Penguins fans are feeling right now with Evgeny Malcolm. Because I feel like they're negotiating through the media. Malkin's camp, that is. Because he is uh, being very... What was it? Latang announced his, his... Or somebody... There was the announcement about Latang's extension and Malkin's like, I boy, I really hope I don't have to play against you. And it was like... 
Oh, Evgeny. Well, that's okay. a bit that that I'm okay with. That's like friendly banter. Personally, I'm not a fan of um, negotiating through the media. I understand why it's done. That doesn't make me a fan of it. It, it tore my heart apart for an entire summer. Um, and Mitch, like, like, to be fair, like Mitch Mara is not the only one who's ever done that. We can, <laughs> do you want to like next episode? We can come with a list of different players who have negotiated through the media. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not particularly a fan of it. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't like that. William Neal. Sorry. No, <laughs> I don't think that was through the media. No, he kind of just, no. that was a weird one. That was, in, yeah. That was a different time. I was going to say that was people unnecessarily going after the man's father for a couple yeah. of months. But then it's like, wait, which negotiation is that? Uh, I just thought about it, like, what the hell is with the Leafs and have it? Anyway, anyway. Um, but no, that was like, Nylander, like never, it was quiet. It wasn't, wasn't nearly as bad. There as was that. the point in the one point in September where they said they'd be willing to take 6.9. That was like the only thing that really crept out and you're right like it was pretty silent after that and then it was like can we get the deal done and then they finally did it's like oh thanks guys for making us waste off wait uh this whole time but uh yeah that's weird that's very strange now uh very very strange okay oh there's just there's so much here uh oh by the way do you see that detroit have a new associate coach bob bugner oh he's back yeah that's good yeah. Baumgartner, uh, I missed it. Baumgartner was like, hey, you see that? I'm like, no. But I did not see that. That's I'm good. happy he got a job because the Sharks kind of threw him. Yeah, threw him another Absolutely bus a little. Threw them. Uh, also, the Kings did an extension as well. Adrian Kempe, you love that guy. Also, somebody say he's like their only 30 goal scorer that isn't Kopitar in like the past great many years. I'm like, whoa, that's actually makes sense because the Kings aren't really known for their goal scoring or like the old Kings were uh, no, not Alex. I follow Jesus Christ. Leave me alone. Adrian. Yeah, I won't lie. I do get those two guys confused too. So <laughs> Pat really just doesn't, doesn't I... like sometimes. Uh, the $5.5 million cap. It, it's four years. He was an all-star this year. Great goal scorer. Lots of speed. The type of player you want to build him on. It's nice that they keep him. Because uh, I'm sure you want, you'd rather, it's like that thing of remember when, uh, the Blues were like, hey, I'm going to go get um, oh my God, why can't... Justin Falk yep. to replace Petrangelo. And it's like, didn't need to do that. What's nice about stuff like this is you can either choose to have somebody ready for insurance policies here, policies, insurance purposes, or just have two really, really good goal scorers on your team in an age of scoring. So I like the Kings doing that. Yeah, or you can let him walk and then just let one of your young guys come in. Like, it's just yeah. the, the Kings are hilarious, man. Like, it's just ridiculous. No, nah, no. Nah, one of those young guys are going out for a chicken and watch. Watch. No, no. Oh, I 100% agree. I agree. But, like, it's just they, I've every time we, every, every time we talk about the Kings, it's like we always have to bring up the fact that they have a plethora of prospects, especially up front. Who haven't even I feel like haven't even touched the NHL yet, and they're just oh. they're an annoying team. They're they are very in annoying. a good way, uh, except the uh, one of the associates to the GMs, uh, Jessica Campbell. By the way, forgot to mention her um, first female head coach in AHL history. I believe she's under the Seattle. Yep. Banner. Yeah, uh, and you know who? I I don't think we talked about it, but you know who the head coach of that team is. Of who? Of the Seattle AHL team, the one in Coachella. Who? Dan Bilesma. Oh, yeah. he uh, That's his new job. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It was I like a couple weeks that. ago. Good Cup friend. legend. Ducks legend, by the way. Because he his last few years, he played on the Mighty Ducks. Oh, wow. Speaking of Western legends, Duncan Keith has retired. Um, the first of the Blackhawks to now retire post Kyle Beach, and who, <laughs> whose legacy is probably forever tarnished. By it, especially Duncan depends Keith. on who you ask. Yeah, uh, idiots, idiots, idiots. Um, now the Blackhawks are going to have their own sort of. I, I, you know what? I actually wanted to get earlier. I wanted to get their cat friendly up here because I was just wondering, like, how does it look after all of this? And first off, my goodness, do they have a great many draft picks? 
Um, but I'm just trying to find, I don't think it's exactly up yet. Okay, no, it is. So the Blackhawks have a dead cap of $5.5 million and then just under $2 million the following year. Um, the Oilers, I don't know if I missed it earlier. I don't know if they get any of it. I can't see anything right now on their cap friendly. So I guess they don't get a cap penalty for it, which confuses me a bit. Wait, what? No, no, they should for Duncan Keith. Yeah. No, no, unless they, I they just get can't it. see it here. Uh, maybe they haven't put it up yet because I don't know if it's been like official that he's retired. Then hold on, hold on. Okay, because I'm looking. Let me let me double check this. Okay, so that was. I'm going to have Edmonton open in one tab. I'm going to Chicago. They have it for Chicago, but the dead cap, they don't have it in Edmonton. Wait, wait, sorry. They have the dead cap in Chicago? Yes. Oh, yeah, because Edmonton doesn't have a doesn't get a dead cap uh, recapture penalty. Why did the Panthers get one for Lalonga when they didn't give him the deal? Yeah, that's what. So that's what I'm. Tr- that's what I've been trying to yes, understand. Okay. So remember, we had this discussion the first time where they said Edmonton was going to get a cap credit and Chicago was going to get the recapture penalty. Yeah. But so, what's the difference between the Luongo deal and and the Duncan Keith deal? Like, is there something within the contract itself that's different the way it's structured? But they're both back diving deals. Wasn't that the whole point? Yeah, they're, they're both, both supposed to be illegal. Time. Yeah. So what makes Duncan Keith in Edmonton have a cap credit, even though they're not going to get it, uh, which is like, what is like, what is this league, by the way? Um, also, good. I don't get it. Not good. Um, OK. OK. So Keith Yander retires. And so I see. No, I don't think it's official yet. Sorry. So the Flyers fired him in the worst moment of the season, to be honest, uh, or on ice moment of the season. Um, and then they proceed to bring in Tony D'Angelo. I don't get it. Let me see I don't get it, I but I get it. I don't get it, but I get it at the same time. Like, how is he going to play with Tortorella? Is my guess. Oh, that's going to be so much so, fun. So, so that's that's a really interesting point, Daniel. And, I, and I've been thinking about that. Obviously, everyone just assumes it's going to blow up, right? Which it will. At one point, it will. Which like it's gonna blow up. It's Tortorella. It's Tony D'Angelo. Something's gonna hit the fan. But it's got to be the most Philly thing that they Philly's done, other than drafting Cutter Gauthier. It's just uh, it's not. It doesn't look good on the player when he oh, like in his press conferences. I'm not a racist. Is that sorry? Um, when did he say that? In his press conference with the Flyers. He's like, I'm not a racist. Oh really? And everyone's like, oh. All right, well, that solves it. <laughs> that's that's the solution, guys. That's the Scooby-Doo mask off the perpetrator moment. It, well, he wasn't a racist. I like. I love the way Daniel responded to that. That, that, that that's What do we think favorite. of Ian Cole, by the way, guys? Oh my god! Oh. You know, I actually what the first tweet. Ian Cole? Oh, you don't look it up. Look up. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not. I don't want to mention pod- it here. Okay, after the podcast, yeah. so I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. saw you guys talking about him, and I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Ian I Cole. thought it was a very hockey on ice related thing, but I, <laughs> I wish, I, I, wish okay, I did not go we'll on talk, the Twitter loophole. No, that's fair. We'll talk about it after the podcast. It's McDavid-ish. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, oh, goodness, where were we? Uh, Bill Guerin. Let me see if I can find this. There's just so much crap what a, around. What a mess. I saw those quotes. So first off, uh, a lot's been blowing up. Sort of going back to the deadline, uh, the sort of situation. Oh, wait, see, I, see, I wanted to read this tweet quickly. Uh, this is from Five Whole Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Uh, the Flyers have now traded a first three seconds, two thirds, Nolan Patrick, Philip Myers, and Shane Gosses bearing a fourth. And telling me 10 million in cap space for Rista Line and Tony D'Angelo and the ghost of Ryan Ellis. Huh. That was into perspective. I don't know what does. Uh, I want to try and find this Bill Guerin quote about uh, Cam Talbot because since uh, Flurry got there, I think he's always been a little upset about it. I believe point. I have it if you'd like uh, it. I just found it. It's oh, okay. okay. Guerin quote I, So this is first off, Pierre Lebrun first tweeted out. Cam Talbot's agent, George Bezos, met with wild uh, GM Bill Guerin during the third round here uh, in Montreal draft, obviously. 
We both stated our positions, Bezos said via text message. Billy has a lot to think about. Michael Russo of The Athletic covers the wild. We love him. Garen, quote, I don't have bleep to do. Cam Talbot's under contract. George can say whatever the hell he wants. My team's set right now, and that's the way it goes. We can have all the discussion we want. Cam's a member of our team. We really like Cam. All we're trying to do is win. Obviously, he was started towards the end of that series against uh, the Blues, where I think he should have started, by the way. Um, now, apparently, Garen is tr- tried to sort of call Cam to calm this all down. But obviously, uh, if you don't, if you don't live in Canada, we had a bit of a phone issue a couple of days ago. More than just that, mm. uh, if you were with, if you were with a certain Lord. a certain provider, you couldn't even make a nine one one phone call. You couldn't use a debit card. Don't even get me yeah. started. Imagine trying to get gas on your way back from Montreal. It's like, ah, by the way, it's not working, and this gas station doesn't have an ATM. Um, yeah. um, so, but apparently there's a big problem there. Um, on top of that, this isn't the only bit of drama going on with the Minnesota Wild. Uh, Russo also had another fantastic article. Uh, I'd say that in quality of work, for my goodness, I'm not the subject. It's of automatic. It, because it's, it's just great. Um, but... It, it, it is a serious note that Kirill Kaprizov has tried to enter the country, or I think it was America specifically, twice. Um, and he's been denied both times in sourcing not having a work visa. You may be asking, oh, what about this? Apparently, last year, European players and that didn't have to have work visas due to COVID, some loophole, and he doesn't have one right now. I think there were one time he was going, what was it, the through the Caribbean or whatever? Yeah, once I believe through Dubai and once through the Caribbean, I believe. And there's word, but it's not confirmed if he's back in Russia? That's the last thing I read is that he it wasn't confirmed if he was in Russia or not. So at least the public right now don't know where Kirill Kaprizov is. And it seems like neither do the Minnesota Wild. And the and so, oh my God! So and right now, apparently, he's wanted in Russia for allegedly faking military ID, and his yes. father has denied this is even the the case. And he's saying he's a student, so he doesn't have to. Yeah, and he falsified like the military service uh, uh, for the training, uh, at least. Ah. Uh, yeah, this is a very uh, it's a very what's the word? It's a very weird situation because I feel obviously in our in our life lifetimes, I don't think we've we've ever seen something um like this, right? This isn't the this isn't the first situation. This is the second situation. First we have uh, Ivan Fedotov who we talked about last episode or two episodes ago. Um, And now we have Kirill Kaprizov. And I'm sure this isn't going to be the last one. Um, I'm uh, quite sure that it's not going to be the last one. And I, I don't even know what to say other than God, I hope he's okay. Because like that, that's all really we can do. A lot of this is going to be so, um, not that it's going to be quiet. It's just this stuff's not going to come out until it's resolved uh, per player. And all we can hope is that everyone, everyone's okay. You know, it, it, you talk about Fedotov, and it was clearly to think of he was being made an example of. I just think of Kaprizov right now, as I was in his situation, I don't know if I could be sleeping soundly right now. And if you're like another Russian player right now, how unsure of you are, like how unsure of you are, how unsure are you of like your playing career, your personal career, like even to that in your family? Because I'm pretty sure Kaprizov's family are still in Russia, people were right. saying. I believe so. That makes it even more worse and stressful for for any of these athletes too. Right. So, and I compared the two situations, but they're actually quite different. So, my understanding was with Fedotov, he was detained in Russia. Yeah. Whereas with Kaprizov, he wasn't able to enter the U.S. because he doesn't have a visa. 
right? And he was forced it, to go back to Russia. Yeah, yeah, and he was forced to go back to Russia. So they're two very different situations. Whereas with Fedotov, and it's extremely unfortunate what happened, there's a lot out of the control of what Gary Bettman can really do. Um, whereas with Kaprizov and the and, and the other Russian players or the other players who live in Russia who are coming here, not that Gary Bettman has more sway, but I think Gary Bettman can do a, um, a lot more behind the scenes when it comes to like, I don't know if you guys remember um, back in 2020 when everything, everything shut down and we were talking about starting uh, leagues up again. Uh, there was a there was a phone conversation between uh, President Donald Trump at the time and the commissioners of the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, UFC, and Vince McMahon. Um, and so clearly, Gary Bettman ha- ha- is going to have these conversations with, I assume, uh, Joe Biden and Justin Trudeau about dealing with these visas. I really hope something works out here. And I think it will, but like, I think the priority number one, and I'm sure they're already working on this. I, I, I can't imagine they're not um, is to sort this crap out. Cause I think this, this isn't going to be, it's going to be a quite interesting next few years. For just years. I imagine the next couple of months, for the Russian players especially. A uh, story to keep it, keep an eye on is a term we use a lot. Uh, I'm very interested in that. I'm very, very interested in that. Uh, especially because this is a star player. Uh, and well, I, I don't think the league ever do too much for that. And we've seen examples of... I mean, I mean, we have an American player. I forget her name. Is it Brittany Griner? Yeah. Yeah. WNBA. yeah. In- she might be in prison for 10 years. And that's what it's up. So for pleading guilty, yeah. She was found with like it was borderline like a vape pen or something, or it was um it was hashish oil that was found in a in like a vapor, like a mm-hmm. vaporizer thing. Yeah. And this would have been around I want to say it was around the time of the Olympics, and it was late, like it was and I think people have sort of said if this was LeBron James or something, she'd be out, but uh it, it's um it's messy, man. It's messy, man. Uh, yeah, hopefully it gets it's sorted out, and it's the same for a lot of the other athletes there, because uh, it's it's like at least the ones who were trying to escape. Is it's just that thing about f- the fake ID for the military service bull crap. I I'd like to I'd like to know because it's funny. I'm pretty sure Finland have the same thing, but Miko Rant in a couple of years ago, remember, was able to do his training for his military service in the summer, so there was sort of. You can. I don't think I need to explain to people how Russia are kind of shady and everything like this, but just to sort of point out, you know, Finland does something like this, and I don't see any problems from Finland. Yeah, uh, I think it's like a minimum before a certain age you have to have X amount of of military service. Um, there's a Miko again. There's a Miko Rantanen article about it. Okay. B- before we move on from the wild, I'm, I don't know if you want to talk about those quotes. Because oh, I'm curious to know what yeah. you guys. I'm curious to know what you guys think of that. What you thought of those quotes? Well, they started the, the lesser goalie in the playoffs, and one that I, I continue to say isn't good enough in the playoffs. No, that and, and that's fair. But what did you think of the quote? Oh, it was hilarious. Okay. No, because I, I, I saw people say you know it was uncalled for. Um, I don't think it was uncalled for. We need more of that in the NHL. I, I well, the thing is, and Daniel, you tell me if you agree or not. But when I read uh, his agent's quote, to me, it's you're almost again negotiating through the media, um, even though he's under contract. So, are you asking for a trade request or not? Because that's sure as hell what it said, and and I'm interpreting it that way. But the way it was written, it did seem to feel like he was asking for a trade re- request while also not asking for a trade request. So which one is it? I think it's about adding the pressure to Bill Guerin to make a decision here because you know, Cam Talbot's not getting any younger. It's the last year of his contract. And yeah. he's not going to get the same amount of playing time he's been used to the last two years for Minnesota because him signing with the Wild really saved his career. And for the way it's just been right now, like if I was in his shoes, then I would probably 
want to look for something like that too, especially if Flurry did get that term. So but, maybe I know he's not asking for it, but it's it's just a weird situation right now because you can't have Flurry playing sixty games anymore. But at the same time, maybe Cam Talbot wants to, you know, still get at least one more contract. It is Cam okay? Uh, let me phrase it like this, and both of you can answer this. Is Cam Calbit going to be traded somewhere and be someone's starter? Who's desperate? Not not a 1A, a starter. I mean, he's already been on the Oilers already, so no. Uh, uh, let's look at the team. Panthers, no. Nope. Um, Toronto, Asterix right now. Um, Tampa, Would you like no. Cam Talbot, Alex, on uh, the list? 60 no. games, no. Buffalo? Um. But they just resigned Craig Anderson. I know. I'm still saying Buffalo, though. Um, he, he's better than Anderson is at that age. The Sen? No. no. Ha, who knows? Who knows a month? No, Jake Allen. Is he's, there – like there's I'm no other team. Any. There's no other team where he's going to go out and play more games than he would in Minnesota. Um, so no. what's the, the issue? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's not a lot of options out there. Like that's what I'm confused at at what t- Cam Talbot's age. If you're pissed, if you're pissed that he d- that you thought he should have started or he thought he should have started, I a hundred I I understand. Maybe it is in his mind he wants to earn that contract, but yeah, at the same time too, like what do you think that's going to? He's look making like? three and a half million dollars. He's making three and a half million dollars and is going to play forty to forty five games next year. That's where that's where that's your contract in a bit. I wonder if he's also upset that he wasn't the starter. He unfairly he earned the starter job in the playoffs and they didn't give it to him. I wonder or listen, maybe there's just a lot of the frustration right now and Bill Guerin didn't get to sort of calm it over right now, but yeah, and 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 yeah, it's he makes 3.666.667. Don't know why he got a contract like that. By the way, I think it's but, ten. I think it's uh, three years, ten million, wasn't it? Like something like that. Yeah, I was like that. The, the issue I have is why are we talking about it now when the Minnesota Wilds were knocked out of the playoffs? As we're like, mm-hmm. they're knocked out of the playoffs two to two and a half months ago. Maybe because it's around the same time Flurry gets done. Because remember, it. I think everyone thought that it was done a couple of days ago when Kevin Weeks sort of had that. Uh, for sure premature report but was there another goalie out there what was what were the chances that cam talbot was going to play 60 games this year no no, no one should anymore no one should except right this is breaking the dice uh, yeah like that's the and and i'm not blaming i'm not so i'm not trying to crap on cam talbot and his agent i'm just saying like what is it that we're trying to uh, accomplish here because to me this just looked like a spat between cam talbot his agent and then Bill Guerin. That's what I want to understand. We'll see. Okay. I doubt he resigns there, though. Probably not. not. to mention just the fact is I don't think they're going to have the money. Yeah. Um, Philip Forsberg finally gets done. I think we were all kind of hoping he was going to hit yeah. the green market. It was uh, kind of expected number, what I already knew. Eight and a half is the AAV. There's a full no move clause for the first six of, uh, years of it. Signing bonuses all in the last four or three million dollars, uh, which is also very interesting. But it, I, I think we talked about where last episode when we talked about them bringing in Ryan McDonough that, you know, Forsberg having back. I think we can. We had the discussion about where the Preds ranked, but it was all dependent on Forsberg coming back. Listen, we know he's one of the best goal scorers in the league. Maybe he needs to get a bit healthy, but it's just it's good for the Preds that they're keeping a star player. Oh yeah, happy for him. Yeah. It'll be a very interesting team next year. Very I am excited to see what the Preds do next year. Because, uh, again, Sara, I get legit. They may have. Okay, let me just double check. I, I have a little thought in my head, but I need to remember <laughs> what team is in every division. Because off the top of my head, is it fair to say that UC Soros is the best goaltender in the Central Division? Coyote, Chicago, Winnipeg, Nashville, St. Louis, uh, Dallas, Minnesota, Colorado. I think right now. They were hell yeah. of right? And I, yeah. So or because Ottinger is still young. He's up there, but he's not 
Saros or Hellebuck yet? So, uh, I mean, I'd say, I'd say yes. I think he's better than Hellebuck. Well, and there we go. And then if we look at the other part of this, the conference, Markstrom, I think the playoffs shook a lot of people in him. Skip Edmonton. <laughs> no, skip the Kings. Skip Robin Leonard, I think, he is good. Healthy, but, yeah. he, but, you know, a rough year there. Um, Thatcher Demko, Demko is, is good, but maybe not that level. He's elite, but he's not. We haven't. We haven't seen Bubble it. Demko's been a long time. I'm sure yeah. if he got in the playoffs a bit more, we'd think about it. Uh-huh. Sorry, James Reimer and Capo Kakinen. No. John Gibson needs to. He needs to come to Toronto and prove himself. And the Kraken. Uh, I feel like what on earth happened to Bauer fell Bauer. Off here. So yeah. he's probably the best goaltender in the Western Conference. Probably. And then he's probably the third best in the league behind Shesterkin and Vasilevsky. Hmm. Because Price doesn't have a knee. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Sens, no offense to Huso, the Sabres, no, no offense to the Bruins guys. Yeah. Leafs goaltending. No. Uh, Bobrovsky's questionable. Freddie Anderson questionable. Jari, not at that level. The Caps goaltending. Sorokin. So on that, the verge. that's the one I'm I'm not convinced. I like I think they're pr- closer than then we give them credit when we give Sorokin credit for, I think that back half of the year. Oh yeah. I think that back half of the year for the Islanders Sorokin absolutely helped. Like there's no, there were Vesna conversations about Ilya Sorokin, right? Sorokin, Shishterkin, Vasilevsky, Saros top four in the league, right? Probably. Yeah. And then maybe Hellebuck fifth, if we want to be cool, or again, maybe Ottinger's in there. Uh man, I'm I going through this. I realize how mess almost like the goaltending teams are. <laughs> okay, but yeah, Forsberg, nice. Uh, the Sens bought out Colin White. I'll put ten bucks that he's going to be happy. We called the Colin White the moment that contract was signed. Oh, we get we nailed. Yeah, it. that was a <laughs> we, bad. We said it. We said it. Maybe for different reasons than uh, it, it the, actually the happened. Injury but... bug we didn't see coming, but <laughs> the salary structure we somehow. <laughs> That was one like you, you paid for potential way too early. I mean, listen, he'll be a hab. He'll yeah. take a cheap contract and then he'll sign another one somewhere and he'll be reborn. He's a he, listen. He looks to be like a forty point player when he's healthy. It's just yeah. it's just been wretch and it's the sends right. Wait, wait, I got it, I got it. He goes to the Habs. Yeah. Then gets flipped for a second and a fourth at the deadline. Isn't that what they did with uh, Marco Scandella? Yeah. Except they had they gave up a fourth and then received a second and a fourth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buffalo are bad. Um, oh god, man, man. Kevin Weeks, stop tweeting unless you have some news, my friend. Uh Tampa aren't done yet, but it looks like Andre Palat is hitting free agency. This is from Pierre Lebrun. Um, if they do lose him, that's a pretty big hit. And I can't wait to see who gives him like six years and five million dollars per Edmonton. the Philadelphia Flyers. That's also a good show. Uh, to finish off the show, uh, Rasmus Sandin. See, here's the here's what I love about about Hap's Twitter and also Leafs Twitter. Right? Is is we are some of the most supportive fans in the world, but then we also turn so so quickly on our players. Okay, Kyle Dubas talked before the draft about the whole Rasmus Sandin situation. Uh, context, it really basically sounds like Rasmus Sandin wants to know where his spot in the lineup is. I think it's fair to say. Because we all looked at Lilligan Giordano. That's pretty much set. Yep. But where is Sandin's spot here is? Dubas basically said, you know, he's with Lilligan. He's a he's a player of the future. We talked about this before. Once guys like Brody and Muzzin are out of the picture, you'd imagine they're the next guys in the top. We've had the discussion before. Um, he talks about him not being healthy this year. Uh, says he was playing well before that national injury, all that. And uh, when the offer sheet was brought up, by the way, he said, uh, if there's going to be an offer sheet, the sooner the better, so we can, can make the decision and move on. Um, Which I, I love joke. how some people completely misconstrued that quote, but that's fine. It's, so, again, I love how, again, Leafs and Habs fans are very quick to turn on players. They don't like what they're hearing. Um I don't exactly know how this ends up because he is a great player. There's a reason this guy went in the first round. They, he was their guy. I remember they moved down 
to actually get, they moved back in the draft. They took advantage. Yep, that was yep. the first like Dubas double phone deal. Um, the Blues, I remember that. Uh, it just feels like he's in a very rough situation right now that Giordano and Lilligreen played so well together. Where's his spot? And is it well, with the Leafs next year? There's a couple options. Um, now, there is a possibility that Mark Giordano doesn't play every night. There is a possibility that Jake Muzzin does not play every night, right? That's fair, right? Mm-hmm. That's fair to say yeah. that both of them, especially Muzzin this year, who, my God, to start the year, definitely look injured. Definitely, mm-hmm. sorry, looked injured. Yes. Um, as did Hall and whatever. That's just, that was a mess. Um, and so you have Rasmus Sandin there who – a hundred percent is a top is able to play in the Leafs top six. He's played on the third pairing where it's always been the struggle for him. And, and I'm, this isn't a criticism. This is a criticism of him, but he's all, he was also 19 and 20 years old when, when this was happening every time, s- similar to Travis Dermott, every time he was given that spot in the top four, it didn't always work out until recently. Recently mm-hmm. he did look a lot better so that ability to play in the top four is good for the Leafs because if Jake Muzzin is not playing one night you can put Jake Muzzin there or you can put Rasmus Sandin there sorry Um, the other possibility with Rasmus Sandin is that he's traded in a trade that involves a goaltender not Matt Murray not Matt Murray as I I need to reiterate not in for the love of God not Matt Murray um if there is another goaltender out there that they're trading for, I don't know. Jake on the rights to Jake on John Gibson. I don't know. I'm just throwing names out there that he is a, a, a positive asset you can throw in that deal. And that I think it's, I, my gut is saying that's probably what's more likely, but again, my gut has zero information. Sandine for Pully Harvey. I don't know if I like that. Really? Well, maybe yeah. you do a bit plus now that you only uh because Pully Harvey's value seems to be dead. If so it's long. as low as every as it's if it's as low as it's bid out to seem, I do not like that deal. Which I don't understand, by the way, because I think Pully Harvey's really good. I don't get that, by the way. No, but I, anyway, I situation for another thing. I just like Here's the thing with Sandine is I understand the frustration, but is Cal Foot complaining he's not getting full time in Tampa? Is Ross Colton always complaining he's not in the top six? I just think he I think if you're Sandine and if I was someone close to him, I would say you look at the blueprint of this team and how it's sort of shaping out, your chance is gonna come. You know what I mean? But when the question is, but when? Because I agree with you. Cal Foot's not complaining, but now Cal Foot's good enough. And Cal Foot waited a year. How about, how long was he in the NHL for before he was? This year was his first full yeah, set. Yeah, because he only played like year. spot, like spot, like clean up a lot of things. Just he wasn't there forever. He was a seventh defenseman yeah. in the first in their first cup run, I believe, if I'm correct. I was just trying to say it's a young player who's trying to get himself into the lineup, right? And it's and it's just like there's there there is a star-studded defense in front of him. Um, but let me make that. I'm not saying the Leafs in Tampa's defensive. Front. <laughs> Whoa, Adam! That. This but, come on. Whoa. Yeah, get, uh, I know you like the Leafs. Um, so but stop it! Stop it! Um, <laughs> Victor Hedman, Morgan Riley, love it. Um, but it's it's like just be patient, young Padawan. No, I is he arbitration eligible? I don't think so. Because I was going to say otherwise, I just don't know how much of a case he has. No, like, I don't think he has much of a case. Like he could get offer sheeted, and I think this like you I, you have to overpay him if you want the Leafs to stop. Like people are saying, like you do basically the cock and thing is you overpay him for one year and then you have a different extension sort of down the line, um, and then the Leafs would probably be like, "Our what we take the asset, right?" Yep. So I, I don't know if that's how it shapes down. Like, I don't know who the team to do that is. Who needs, but, a, like, who needs a young defenseman? But it's like, is that what you want to do? Do you want to step away from this situation? 
We're, I, I don't know, man. I, I think the matter of the fact is, though, he's one of the least best six defensemen. That's what the issue is here. Yeah. It's just that they have four of them who can play on the left side. Actually, they have five of them who can play on the left side. They have Riley, Muzzin, Giordano, Brody, and Rasmus Sandy. Now, Brody has the ability to play on the other side. I don't want to see Morgan Riley, Rasmus Sandy, and again, don't ever do that to me again. That one hurt a little bit. Listen, um, parents, if you're having a kid play hockey, make them shit right. Exactly. <laughs> um, what I now could, but again, Unless they like, want to make Team Canada, Canada, by the way. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> unless they want to make Team Canada. Like, could a Muzzin. Sandine, like again, like now we're now we're having a conversation about handedness, and it's like, or oh, what is this, Travis Dermott all over again? So I don't want to put that on Rasmus Sandine because he's better than he is a better player than uh Travis Dermott. I don't want to put that on him. Um, but you know, like th- this is the issue. We're having this conversation, like re-signing Mark Giordano, while I absolutely love the idea, threw an absolute wrench into what next season was gonna look like for the defense. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. I don't. I wish I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. I can't wait for the super. I, I will never forget that super RFA class. By the way, it just uh, it changed everything. Who was me. that? Who was in that? Mar. It was the Marner one. Marner Kachuk. Aho or Lugan, Aho, but they, yeah. they fixed it. Uh, Manjapani was the least relevant one of them all. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, it was wild. Okay, Minnesota any, wild. Yes, any exactly? Anything else you guys want to say or? Um, you said a lot. It's a long show. It has been. We're all still recovering. Alex from work, Adam and I from the shock of our hearts in the first four picks. God, Sapkowski better work out. I don't know why I'm holding my mic. It's not even working, bro. When are you getting his jersey? Um, I don't know. Whenever I get two hundred dollars to burn, you know. Which isn't very That's awful. a way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, even though I'm not going to get his jerseys before I get prices. Okay. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. Next episode, it's going to be free agency. Kadri's going to be a Washington Capital, I say. A uh, Pittsburgh Penguin. A Boston Bruin. I, oh. I, both of us will hate that so much. He goes to Edmonton and they, they resent it. the stop team it. contract. Stop it. Okay. Stop it. No, don't. That's worse than Boston. That might be worse than Boston. Thank you for listening. We will see you later. Check out all the links below. Looking forward to free agency. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>